One of the more modern objections against the Christian faith is that acknowledging God's existence could restrict our freedom. Behind this objection is the unspoken claim that personal autonomy is where the good life really lies. The Victorian era English poet William Ernest Henley, he put it like this in his poem Invictus. He said, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. He's expressing this sense that freedom is having the ability to express myself, be me, find myself, follow my heart, insert the rest here. It's freedom to pursue my desires and execute my will. Freedom is the absence of constraint and restriction, especially those which make me accountable to some kind of God. When we center our lives around abstract freedom, I don't think we understand what it really entails. On a mundane level, it's actually pretty arbitrary. See, unrestricted freedom to do whatever you want is, is practically impossible. Think about it. Um, I have a secret love for almond croissants. In fact, my wife and I, we have this theory that an almond, cro almond croissant and a flat white can lighten almost any mood in life. The thing is, though, that almond croissants aren't that healthy for you. And that poses a problem because I like to try and live a pretty healthy lifestyle. So here's the catch. Either I restrict myself from eating almond croissants so I can enjoy a healthy lifestyle, or I give myself the freedom of eating almond croissants and forego a healthy lifestyle, but I can't have both. Even if I'm free to do anything I choose, that doesn't mean I'm free to do everything I want. There's always a limitedness to being a human. Here's the point. The freedoms we want, they often conflict. And so it's practically impossible to say that freedom means the absence of constraints because we always have to choose between different constraints, which means, and please get this, that you can't talk about what it means to be a true to be truly free unless you talk about what it means to be truly human only once you've done that can you say this freedom is more valuable than this freedom and therefore i'm willing to implement these constraints over these constraints on a deeper level though seeking freedom from god actually works to our own demise growing up the thing that i craved most was independence from my family. I don't know why, I just did. And this sort of came to a dramatic climax one night when I got home on a Sunday evening about 8 p.m. and I ran away from home. I was furious, I was just angry with my parents for some reason, so I left home, skateboard under my feet, rolling down towards the water, just north of Brisbane where I grew up, to sit by the bay and overlook the skylights across the water. And I sat there on top of a rooftop for about half an hour and the longer I sat fuming, feeling angry, having my heart calloused, feeling independent from my family, I got lonely. And the more I got lonely, the more I got sad. And the more I got sad, the more I regretted ever being angry at my parents and ever wanting independence from them. I realized that I didn't want independence from my family. I wanted intimacy with them, that I enjoyed my family, but there was this thing within me that pushed me away from them. And so I got down from the rooftop and began to make my way home. As I got down from the rooftop, I saw this man running around the waterfront asking random strangers this question, have you seen this boy? And I remember thinking, what an embarrassing thing for a man to do on a school night, Sunday evening before the week ahead, how embarrassing. And I went to make my way home, but as I got closer and closer to this man, I realized this man was no stranger. This was my dad. I left angrily and began to make my way home and he, at 9 p.m. at night on a Sunday evening, at great embarrassment and cost to his dignity, he ran out to find me. We embraced and he just said, son, what's wrong? And that is an image of my father that will never leave my imagination. And did you know that the Bible tells the exact same story about God and humanity? So if you get a chance, you can read the story in chapter 15 of Luke's Gospel. It'll, it'll be the third book of any New Testament you find lying ar around, whether at home or elsewhere. But the basic picture is this, that humanity is like a son who says to a father, give me all of your stuff without you, so I can live all of my life my way. Away they go, autonomous from him, only to find that that freedom they crave just heaps misery upon them. They return to confess and find that the father they thought would be angry has spent himself to find them. None of us were created to be free from God. We were created to be sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. 
And once we reject that vision, it's not like we become self-sufficient vagabonds on a secular leisure trip we call life. We become spiritual refugees, always longing for a home. And that sense of dislocation, in the language of the philosopher James K. A. Smith, I would say it's like a postcard from the self that we were made to be. And here's the good news of the Christian story. It's that there is an asylum in the heart of God, which doesn't stipulate an immigration limit. And it's open to all spiritual refugees. And at great cost to God himself, he's running after each one of us. And so here's the question, how do you flourish in a world that prizes freedom? Come home to your heavenly father.